know. Namaste. Jai Baba. I'm Sarah McNeil and I'm recording this in London at the, at the centre. And I'm taking 1918 as the culminating year of World War I with reference to Meha Baba's ongoing descent to normal consciousness following the state of God realization precipitated by Babajan's kiss in 1914. And I've put together a few items relating to the theme of avatar change. Some of the effects and the impact of the avatarhood of Meha Baba could already be seen during the latter years of the previous century in a, an acceleration of change in social, technological, scientific, political and economic fields. It's a change that runs parallel to the rapid revolution in media and communications, work, travel, the role of women, and, and things like the world of music, for example, and much else. The commencement of the real change-making work of the Avatar was also marked globally by the explosion of World War I with a violence that gave almighty impetus to the events of the following decades. The dates of World War I, 1914, 1918, have been etched into the minds and memories <coughs> of generations of troops when at first just 10 countries became involved in unprecedented loss of life in the early battles on land and at sea, and the Dardanelles and at Gallipoli. But by the end of the Great War, as it became known, 32 nations had been caught up in the conflict. And this phenomenon is viewed by many as the Kali Yuga, the long era of destruction and devastation predicted in Hindu scriptures. Yet, although may, many saw Meha Baba as the Kalki avatar, he never referred to himself as such. But it is a fact that during the lifetime of the avatar, the Great War ushered in decades of war and conflict, which continued to wreak havoc in many nations of the world. <clears throat> in 1939, 1939 20, 20 years later, at the time of the outbreak of the Second World War, Baba was already deep in his life's work and he made no secret of the controlling powers he deployed through masts such as Chatty Baba. In those later events, he even made light of his influence over key players such as Hitler and Mussolini, naming his two pet goats, not hidden this, but hidden mus. Well, the clouds of war, the clouds of World War I, had begun to gather well before the time of the birth of the Avatar. Early outbreaks of armed uprising against British rule in India came in 1857 and marked the start of the breakup not only of the foundations of the British Empire but also of the international balance of power. War and revolution spread throughout Russia, China, the Middle East and parts of Africa and it's worth noting, talking about key players, that a young officer by the name of Winston Spencer Churchill serving in India's 4th Hussar Cavalry Brigade with a commanding officer by the name of Colonel Brabazon, which is a nice coincidence. Churchill spent three years in India during this period and was actually stationed in Pune in 1896. But the key players in World War I early in the 20th century were the five perfect masters. They had brought about the incarnation of the Avatar, and at a later date, Meha Baba revealed that Sai Baba drew up the battle lines and held sway over the tides of war at this crucial period in time. And when World War I ended in 1918, Sai Baba's life's work was done and his life also ended. Today, 
day, 1914, signifies not only the start of that war, but also the year the 20-year-old Dekan, this college student, Noel Irani, became God-realised. 1918 marks not only the end of that war, but also the passing of Sai Baba. The kiss from Hazrat Baba Jan in 1914 marked the start of a seven-year marathon of endurance for Merwan and led to his being acclaimed by Prasanna Maharaj in 1921 as Avatar of the Age. Accounts of these times make no mention of the World War I. The period up to 1921 is known as the time of Baba's descent, and during that process, 1918 was outwardly marked mainly by his move away from the home in Pune's cantonment area over to Kasper Park on the west, western side of the city. The term descent refers to the process of his coming down from the state of God consciousness precipitated by Babajan, an insight to get an insight into the state of God consciousness insofar as it affirms infinite existence and eternal being, is best found in the Parvati Garb. The effect on their one being hurtled into that state was irreversible transformation on all levels of consciousness. Human awareness is based on the duality of illusion, and it means that human experience develops through an infinite variety of differences and distinctions and definitions, all deployed by Maya to be all deployed by Maya to beguile and entrap the individual in separateness. God consciousness is absolute oneness. Perfect masters attaining God realization are said to subsequently make a descent back to the material world to work within the norms of physical existence. For the avatar, the descent is totally other than that. Insofar as he had to maintain his conscious state of oneness with God, while at the same time living, working and being or knowing in the physical world of forms, he had to contain duality and oneness simultaneously and be the embodiment of God. Holding both together called for sustained superhuman effort, exercising physical, emotional, mental and spiritual capacities to a degree of intensity beyond our conception. By comparison, Banging his head against stone apparently gave Baba the kind of relief, to use his own words, an overstressed person might experience from a cup of tea. At a later time, he explained, I used to bang my head to relieve my pain. I scarred my head on floors and walls. I could not contain myself. It was as if the whole universe was on my head. As the embodiment of God, Avatar Beha Baba said he had come to give a nudge to the whole of humanity in order to advance the process of spiritual transformation. But to do this, he had to work within the realm of Maya, a realm of illusion and polarity, ruled by the principle of opposites. Somehow, these opposites appear to create the condition needed by the avatar to engineer his unseen work of spiritual transformation. Thus, the great war could be seen as an outward aspect of opposition on an unimaginable scale. One image from the violence and mutilation of that war illustrates how as well as being an instrument of change, the very nature of, war, of the very nature of warfare itself was changed when traditional cavalry was relegated to history almost overnight, which was in 1917. And the awesome splendor of the 
Ninth Dakar Horse Regiment from Maharashtra mounted a charge full tilt into devastating fire from enemy gun emplacements on a northern ridge in France. But few survived that charge. Men and horses were mown down, making this the last ever great cavalry charge. Only tanks and heavy munitions could possibly prevail in the new mechanised warfare. In turn, massive demand for tanks, guns and ever increasing quantities of ordnance rapidly brought about change in manufacturing and production methods. New factories and development of mass production by means of assembly line and conveyor belt transformed the workplace with drastic consequences for working conditions for millions as vast manufacturing complexes transformed cities, homes and the working lives of whole populations. That was the outward change evidenced worldwide in the boosted growth of industrial development. Real avataric change remains unseen, and all outward forms are no more than shadows, veiling the immensity of spiritual transformation and change, which is the real work of the avatar. Avatar Neha Baba Kiji. Thank you, Sarah.